And uh, the other thing that I that I did um, in um, oh sorry for that. So back again. Okay, so the other thing that I did at this point to obtain uh, to obtain um, files to work on uh, was to export UVs and uh, texture files. So let me do it, for example, with with this one. Um, with this file on, I'm just going to use. Um, Okay, uh, UV master. So I'm going to work on clone. Uh, just unwrap. It's a, it's a piece of a square geometry, so it should unwrap uh, just nice and, uh, and easy. Okay. Now that just to check my UV map, I'm going to morph UVs to see if it's indeed a square. So it's kind of a square. And uh, just quickly, what I did after, after that is to send uh, this to, my, to Maya so I can just fix. Well, it's not, it's really not a, a really necessary step, but um, just to have more consistent result, I just wanted my, my initial UV to be as square as possible. So you'll see me. Uh, do that in uh, in Maya. Um, I'm not especially going to show you that, or I did that in here because you may have another 3D software, or you can just be satisfied with that and uh, and uh, do it do it your way. But uh, you'd see me uh, send each of this uh, piece of geometry to to Maya just to tweak a bit the UVs and make them look like more like a square, and uh, and then uh, send back that geometry to to the brush. So I just uh, use that, copy my UVs, get back to, to the actual piece of geometry and paste the UVs in there. Okay, after which I just created, created a texture mat, map with a um, new texture from whatever you want, UV map, UV check, poly paint, it, it doesn't matter. They are all going to create a texture map. So from poly paint is fine because I can really see the black and white areas. You know, clone my texture. So I, I have it in my texture palette and export that texture file. Like uh, I'm going to just do it um, in here just for the test. So takes and now it's quite easy to open this file in Photoshop. Um, do whatever texture work you you want on it. And uh, and uh, import it back into um, into the brush, and uh, this way you can send it. Uh, there there is two ways to that you can either import it back in Photoshop in a uh, ZBrush. I'm going to show you that. So the, the cool thing of um, of having um, uh, this UV corrected in um, in uh, Maya is I could uh, just ma make them uh, straight, so it, it's easier to to lay out your your pat your patterns, especially in in the case of a of a piece of fabric like that. Okay, here. Yeah. Save it. Um, in case you want to import it in Keyshot, you'll have to save it as a as a GPG uh, or something else. Okay. 
and now you can either import it back into uh, the brush and use this here so really quick and very very easy process and now if, if you send if you send all these two key shots uh, sorry I have to set my external renderer again because ZBrush crashed Okay, and here is um, this pattern. And uh, if for some reason you you prefer to to sign this um, this uh, texture right into your your material here, it's it's quite easy to just unix the materials, edit it, and in your texture files you can change change that to the correct, the correct files. The brush, texture, okay, and uh, okay, I've done that on purpose just to make sure it, it, it had uh, the correct, uh, the correct texture. And this is not the correct texture, why is that? Okay. Now it is. Okay, so now we have to assign it as a UV coordinate. And it's in here. So you can do it both ways. You can import it right into ZBrush and, and keep your, your straight process uh, right from uh, ZBrush to Photoshop. Or you can uh, import it in KeyShot once you, you're, you're ready. And, uh, um, what you'll find later on, I show you, I, I have all those materials set up. I, I'm not going to go for that right now. So I think this is this is it for for the um, the brush part. Let me check if there is anything else to interesting to import. Oh yeah. Polycryptoga new head. Maybe mm, there is a toga. And uh, I think for the bikini, the oil lamp, and th as I did for the other the other part, like the glaive, the shield, uh, uh, I think the, um, the full process video is, uh, is pretty straightforward. It, it really shows uh, all the steps I took. Uh, maybe for, for the new head, I could make some comment in the toga. But um, here again, the, the full process is, um, is quite, uh, is quite uh, clear. Uh, okay, so I have a weird thing happening in here. Here it is. So, subtools. What I did for that head, I just managed to get the, the head in the correct uh, in the correct location. Here I used the polygroup and and um, and uh, visibility uh, tools to uh, to hide the, the other part part of the head, and um, I just placed the uh, the new head at the right place. So. It, it's really it's really easy to do that. It's quite a, of a nice process because at at any point you can just patch another piece of a, of geometry in ZBrush, and because it's a straight pipeline between ZBrush and Photoshop, going through KeyShot, uh, you're going to to have your um, your new piece of geometry rendered and right in the in the right place when you need it. 
And for the Toga, you'll see me doing something quite funny uh, because uh, by mistake, I've exported the the avatar um, in the um, Marvelous Designer um, uh, vocabulary. The avatar is um, the underneath piece of geometry on which uh, the simulation is going to interact with. And uh, I've exported, so I, I've, I've exported the, the, um, the figure, only the relevant part of the figure that I was uh, that I needed, which is uh, only basically the torso with a bit of the of the uh, of the head and uh, and and the legs. And uh, I just uh, exported it the other way around. So when I uh, I'm importing that uh, that toga. Uh, back into the brush, you'll see me just tweak it a bit because uh, uh, hopefully uh, this figure is, is almost symmetrical, so it wasn't much of a big deal. And uh, the very cool thing about um, Marvelous Designer when you are using the, the native uh, garments is that it's already uh, taking care of the UVing for you. So you have a very nice UV in which correspond to the actual piece of, uh, of fabric that you used. So, so any, um, any folds you have in here, it will perfectly match the underneath geometry in the UVs. So that, that's, uh, again, Marvelous Designer, just a, a fantastic tool for, for designing uh, clothes and costumes and uh, fabric simulation, which I'm only starting to, to scratch the surface and I feel uh, it's a, uh, an extremely power, powerful tool, and, and I'm definitely going to give it uh, more time in the future. So, I think this is it uh, for the general overview of the ZBrush process. Uh, I hope that uh, those explanations, along with the, the full lens, uh, the, the full process, uh, accelerated process, I, I, Hopefully this is going to be enough for you to, to grasp the general, uh, um, the general process. And once again, I, I don't want to get too technical in here because um, any of the steps that I've been doing here, you could do that in any other three softwares. It really doesn't matter. It's really much about uh, solving problems with whatever tools you can have and, uh, and just just try something else if there is a, at some point um, a tool that doesn't work and uh, like I did for the for the, the fabric I just I just sculpted a raw a raw piece of geometry to have an idea and blocking out my my 3d geometry and after which I used uh, the proper tools that will give me the correct uh, fabric simulation and having something that will uh, that look really nice Okay, so see you in the next uh, chapter.